So hi and welcome back and today we're doing some HP5 now originally and it says in the rest of this video that I use 510 Pyro. That didn't happen. Um, there is a reason for this. When I was out taking the photographs in London, I was on my way to a job and I was in some, stuck in some pancreas. I wanted to go out and take some shots in the city, but the weather was so desperately bad. There was absolutely nothing I could do. So I actually went around St Pancras Station and took some photographs inside St Pancras Station at 400 ISO with the HP5. And some of the shots, when I was taking them, I was thinking, this is going to be something really nice, something I'm, I'll be pleased with. And I didn't want to risk developing it in 510 Pyro and then not having um, a good developed film, something I'd be unhappy with when I can develop it in something like FX39, which I, which I know as a developer from, uh, from times gone by. So I developed it in FX39 instead. So you'll hear me talking about uh, 510 Pyro, that's not what happened. I'm going to do that. I've been, I think I've got another Pentax camera coming from somebody, which would be quite good. So I will probably put the other HP5 in that and do that in 510 Pyro. If the Pentax doesn't work out, I can tell if it's broken, then that won't, that won't happen. I will just do it in something like uh, my, the Olympus trip that I've got and then do that in uh, 510. Was I pleased with the results I took? Yeah, I was, but I don't know how the grain should look with FX39 with HP5. It looks quite coarse, the grain, to me. Um, so if any of you can comment, explain to me if you think that's, that's the particular reason for that. Um, the tonal range I really, really like, but having said that, I still prefer my uh, FOMAPAN 200 in uh, Rodinol at 400. So is it gonna be a go-to film? It's never a go-to film. So I just like to experiment. The other thing I wanted to ask, because I know some of you like to comment, is I've got the uh, CHS 102, and I believe the two stands for two uh, anti-halation layers. Now, can anyone tell me if this would be good for like nighttime photography to stop those uh, golf ball blowout type things you get with, with, with bright lights? I'd be interested to know if you could tell me that. Anyway, enjoy the rest of the video. You'll see some of the photographs as it goes through me talking when I'm in St Pancras Station, and then we'll go through them at the end, and I'll tell you the ones I like the most and why. Enjoy. You know they say best made plans and all that and that's been kind of what's happened today. The idea is I'm working tonight so the idea was come in with a film camera, take some photographs and I'm here and it's like really windy so can't really film outside and also it's raining quite heavily so the rain's coming sideways rather than straight down which doesn't help. So I'm in St Pancras Station and I've got some HP 5 Plus. I'm exposing it at 400 in the Canon EOS 300 and uh, I'm going to be developing it in 510 Pyro because someone said it's quite good in that. And this film was bought for me by somebody who, buys, who bought me a coffee and he bought me quite a few other things as well which I'm really pleased about. You should have seen that in the previous video. I'm hoping I'll get that out before I do this. So I've got to get to where I'm working today, um, but I've done a few shots here. I've done a shot of uh, the Bitch, um, John Bitchman statue. I've done one of the um, the, uh, the Tracy Emin effort uh, with the clock in the background, and I've taken one outside of a, I guess it was like a 1970s build or 1980s build office block with this strange lift on the outside. So I've done those and uh, I'm going to try and take a few more before I have to head off to work but I can't really go anywhere. Uh, the first idea was to go to Westminster, that could, that's just not going to happen and then I was going to walk through Sumstown to Euston and get the tube from Euston but it, the weather is just so bad it's just not not worth me doing it. So I just thought so, I saw, I saw someone I knew but, I, but it's not them. Anyway so yeah that's the problem with, with planning like this, it's just not, not the best. But um, I'm going to try and get into London at the weekend as well and do some more shots and go to Westminster and there's a few other places I still want to go to that I've never been to and then I'm planning ahead for weeks to come. I've got lots of different films to try out uh, thanks to people buying me coffees and if you can buy me a coffee that would be really really great. Alright, let's get on. So the other major problem I've got in here is um, shutter speeds and uh, running 
sometimes at 45th of a second, which isn't good. It's up to 125th at F8, which isn't bad, but it's, it's comes down to 4.5 at uh, say 30th of a second which is not a good handheld speed so the likelihood is I'm going to get a lot of blurs and um, the things I wanted to photograph if I'd have used the flash I'd have got like a reflection straight back at the camera so it wasn't really really suitable for what I wanted to do although I don't think there's a problem using a flash gun inside St Pancras station I've never I've never seen people told off for using a flash gun or whatever so um, I took a photograph of the booking office, uh, what was the booking office, it's now a high-end um, restaurant type, cafe type place and you probably can't see him over there but there's, there's uh, way behind me on the other side there was a security guard and um, he was standing looking at his phone with his back to me so I got a shot of him as well which was quite fun. Um, I don't know whether I'm going to show you these photographs as I go along or if I will uh, instead look at them at the end so I could do both actually so I could you can see them now and then I, you could we could go through them at the end I can zoom in and look at how well the 510 Pyro was dealt with the um, HP 5 Plus um, as I say I didn't want to push the the film I wanted to use it as a 400 rather than push it to 8 or 1600 which I quite easily could have done but um, it kind of defeats the object if I wanted to use it in a particular type of developer um, because I'm testing out people are saying how it's, it's really really good Anyway, onwards. Okay, so I don't want to make these videos overly long, but I want to go through some of the photographs with you that I took with the uh, HP 5 Plus. Now, I've not used HP 5 Plus since it was HP 5. So I've never actually really used it. So I don't know what I'm looking at in the sense of the grain and all those sorts of things. Can I get the grain finer with a different developer? Could I do that with 510 Pyro? Those sorts of things. So so you're my eyes on this one because I don't really know. As I say, never really used to use HP5 because I was a Delta fan. So I used to use Delta a lot. Okay, so I'll just take a look at a few of the uh, photographs I've taken. And... Um, I saw this guy from a distance coming cycling up and I saw the two women and I thought making my making a nice shot of just these three people in this frame and it's cut quite well so I was quite pleased with this one the ones I'm most pleased with we'll show you in a few minutes is the ones I did in London which you've already seen okay and I remember seeing the swan just coming to land I wanted to try and get it here but I was too late I've got the shot of the lady on the actual bench with the with the swan landing um so i don't know if this grain is if it's you know i don't know what to say because i've never used hp5 plus at all and i don't know how grainy it is is this what i'm is this what you're supposed to be looking at okay and I was trying to imitate the shot i did with the foma pan 200 pushed to 400 and yeah it is not as good um the lighting wasn't as striking this time round as it was the time round when I did it with the Foma pan. So that's probably what I was expecting from it. And a classic scene of an English countryside. No, <laughs> classic scene of an English town with a river. And uh, just getting the, uh, the people in the boat, the rowers, and the overhanging trees, and the bridge, and then the, the church in the background. How very lovely. Now we're at St Pancras Station and this was on the wall and I didn't know quite, I don't know whether I was going to take a shot of it or not, but I did anyway, uh, just to see how it came out and you're seeing the reflection of the roof in the actual names of the things on here, okay? And this one I absolutely love, the booking office shot, I'm so pleased with this, it came up so well, you know, um, I, it's just one of those, those things that, that's pretty much timeless and you know that could have been taken in the 1950s or 60s and it was taken in 2022 and again this is the one I went outside and it was throwing it down with rain actually I think you can see the rain in the actual shot um, and it, it looked quite good um, not the best of shots but still it was worth a go and this shot this is my is this my favourite shot? Because it's a shot I took in Bedford, which I'll show you. But this is probably one of the two favourite shots of this customer services assistant standing looking at his phone and then the woman walking the other way with the mobile phone as well. Brilliant. I, I, I can't say brilliant about my own photographs, but yeah, I, I was just really, really pleased with this and um, got some lot of blowout from the light coming in 
at the front here but that can only be expected it's just it's a really difficult to place to take photographs in with this with the type of light you get in there and I quite like this one with the, the the Tracy Emin and then the clock. I think that's really, really quite a nice shot. I was really pleased with this. And this is why I didn't want to develop in 510 Paro because I didn't know what I'd get. With the FX39, it's more of a standard developer. So I knew, I, I knew roughly what I'd get with it. And this is what I expected from it. And then uh, the photograph of Bitumen. And uh, yeah, I think I've dropped him too far down in the frame. I think there's too much headroom on this one. And um, I should have come down slightly on that. Something like that sort of thing would have probably worked, but it's a lot better. And again, I saw this. That's been, it's actually been there since 2014. I'm surprised the accounts haven't cut it off. And I, when I was looking at this, I thought this would make a nice shot. And it has. I'm really, really pleased with it. And I've got a few more of the rowers. And then the uh, geese wandering through. They're, they're all in a line. And I didn't get to it in time. These were back here. And they look so much better the other side of the bridge. And again, the swans. And swans again. And I like the way the actual uh, cloud has come out on this. It's um, There's no filters or anything. Just as, as it was. And this is the other shot that I love. I've never been able to take a good photograph of this, these stairs. It goes onto what's called Castle Mound. And every time I've taken a shot, it's never been any good. But this one, I'm really, really pleased with. And there was some poppies opening, some some big, huge poppies. And I thought I'd take a couple of shots. There's two photographs of that. But you can see how I like that, even though you can see the grain. But it's got a really, really strong, you know, the blacks are dark and the mid-tones and, the, and the, the lighter tones are really, really really clean as well so I like that one a lot and this was I think it was a white rose nothing too spectacular about that one and the last couple of shots this was uh, taken uh, looking into the John Bunyan uh, church and this was the last shot this didn't work out at all this was looking in it looks so much better looking at it than it did actually taking the shot and it's obviously got some camera shakers there as well there anyway don't forget to like comment subscribe and i'll see you in the next video